At this point, I should probably start a series called uh, Crazy Stuff Nobody Expected That James Webb Discovered and we still have no idea what it is. Because once again, that's exactly what we're talking about today. How wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're discussing something from the famous Orion Nebula. Something that the scientists discovered very recently when new detailed analysis of the Orion Nebula, and specifically a location known as the Trapezium, revealed objects nobody has ever seen before and nobody understands how they formed. The objects scientists are currently calling Jumbos, Jupiter Mass Binary Objects. And I guess as the name implies, they seem to be binary objects very similar to planet Jupiter in mass, but exactly what and how they formed makes no sense. But I guess more intriguingly, at least 42 have already been discovered in just the last few days. More are probably hiding inside. And so in this video, let's discuss this unusual discovery, but also discuss the incredible images released by the James Webb that you can actually explore yourself by using an amazing tool from ESA, a browser-based application known as ESA Sky. Basically a visualization of everything we know and have so far from most of the modern telescopes. And yeah, that's literally astronomy at your fingertips. If you ever want to study astronomy by yourself, this is precisely where you start. Here you can technically fetch almost any data from any telescope and then use it for your own analysis or your own studies. Obviously you have to know what to do with those images, but they're right here. Which is why there are two modes, science mode, this is more for scientists, or for anyone wanting to do science, or explorer mode, for people that just want to look around. And though quite a lot of older images will usually look somewhat outdated and somewhat blurry, once you switch into the James Webb mode, things become way way more clear and you actually get to see a lot of detail you've never seen before. And so for the Orion Nebula and specifically for the Trapezium, we get two different channels. We get the short wavelength versus the long wavelength. They do show us slightly different detail and obviously reveal slightly different objects. But in order to try to discover some of the objects we're going to be discussing, we have to look at things in short wavelengths. There's actually a lot of stuff going on here. This image is absolutely mind-blowing. Even trying to zoom in right here, we suddenly discover this enormous explosion covering a very large area with a lot of finger-like protrusions going in every direction, already raises a lot of questions. What exactly caused all of this? As a matter of fact, the center of all of this seems to be somewhere right here, maybe. And while a lot of these fingers, these unusual red features, these are known as the Orion Molecular Cloud 1. This is essentially an outflow, and specifically an outflow of hydrogen gas, which most likely resulted from a collision between two giant stars. And because this is so fast, moving at approximately 100 km per second from this direction, scientists believe that it happened somewhere right here a few hundred years ago. And it's almost certainly a collision between two stars because of these unusual green patches you see right here. Now this is not really green in real life, these are just frequencies of infrared light converted to visual spectrum, but this green stuff is iron. And this iron was produced as a result of a massive star collision. It would be very difficult to explain the formation of these fingers with these red fingertips through any other means. Anyway, definitely super beautiful and an extremely gorgeous event that you can actually see for yourself by using your browser. Now if you look around, you'll find a lot of other really intriguing stuff, and specifically objects that maybe look something like this. And it becomes pretty obvious what this is once you start zooming in. And just the fact that we can see this from approximately 1400 light years away is of course mind-blowing. Here's another one that's maybe a little bit smaller. And as you might have guessed already, these are basically protoplanetary disks. Let's put one right here as my little hat. So essentially, baby stars turning into baby planetary systems, and if you look around, you'll find quite a few of these, although most of them are a little bit difficult to spot, with a lot of them containing their own secrets as well. It's uncertain, for example, what exactly is around this one. Or this one that seems to contain some kind of a cometary tail. But because the Orion Nebula contains thousands of young stars, it's obviously not surprising we can see these objects. We just couldn't see them before because they were hidden by gas, but the James Webb can see through the gas, revealing their presence. And here you can actually even guess the mass of the star by seeing how large the object appears. Some of the larger ones go up to 40 solar masses, with some of the smaller ones only being about 10% of the solar mass. But what's intriguing is if you look around these objects and if you actually spot any large and really bright stars, it even becomes possible to observe the effects that the solar system, or specifically the sun, received in its childhood as well. In the first million years, 
The intense ultraviolet radiation from some of these really massive stars quite dramatically affected the disk of the solar system in the first million years. And this is actually what's happening to many of these stars as well. And the more neighbors they have with powerful UV radiation, the more of the disk gets destroyed, eventually producing very different planets. For example, the effects on this particular star seem to be quite dramatic, to the point where even the shape of the disk seems to be changed a little bit. So the neighborhood of the star system also affects the types of planets the star will produce. I guess you could almost say it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, okay, maybe not the best comparison here, but you get the point. But one of the reasons this whole region is called trapezium is actually because of these four stars you see right here. They essentially form a trapezium, a geometric shape. These stars are only about one and a half light years away from one another, but are directly responsible for most of the illumination of everything around them. These are really powerful, really massive, and very bright stars. And so they're actually the ones changing most of the things in the neighborhood. All in total, if you were to zoom out, there are thousands of different stars here, which are going to be producing several thousand different planets eventually. But while investigating this image, the more experienced eagle-eye astronomers started to discover these unusual binary objects. Essentially objects that appear to be possibly very small, maybe Jupiter-like, simply based on the heat they were producing, suggesting that they were not really stars, but strangely enough, almost always appearing in pairs. And there's actually quite a lot of them in this image if you look around. In total, they've discovered at least 42 so far, and you can find information about most of them in the study in the description. All of these seem to be a little bit more massive than Jupiter, but not brown dwarfs, so they're definitely planets. But like binary planets. And it's not entirely clear what they're actually doing there or how exactly they were created. Now today, when it comes to planets, and specifically planets without stars, or the so-called rogue planets, we understand they can be generally created by either being kicked out of the star system, possibly through some kind of a gravitational interaction with something else, or by maybe being formed entirely by themselves from just a much smaller amount of material, although that process is not entirely well understood. But binary planets? That's definitely unheard of. Because essentially it suggests either two planets were created very close to one another and then somehow got kicked out of the star system, or these two planets were somehow created without a star, but instead of one object, they formed two. But not two objects close to one another, two objects orbiting relatively far away. Here the distance seems to be approximately 100 astronomical units. And at the moment, it has absolutely no explanation. Nobody knows what these jumbos are. They seem to be a new mystery of the Orion Nebula. At the moment, the best explanation is the ejection hypothesis, suggesting that two planets were basically thrown out of the star system and then somehow joined together and started orbiting around one another. But because this happened at least 42 times, it just means it's some kind of a mechanism that we just maybe don't understand or have never imagined happening anywhere. But according to modern star formation theories, just by itself, a typical Jupiter-sized planet should not actually have enough mass to form into a single solid object inside a nebula. A brown dwarf can form, but maybe not a Jupiter-like object. And so whatever these things are, I guess maybe time will tell, but we're not going to know for quite a while. Although this raises an obvious question, if these double Jupiters exist, what about other types of planets? Could there be maybe similar double Earths orbiting somewhere else as well? Especially if this is an ejection hypothesis idea, nothing is stopping stars from throwing away planets like planet Earth and then turning them into rogue planets, but instead of one Earth, you have two. Not something we're going to be able to answer anytime soon, but it's definitely an intriguing question. But in terms of what we know about them so far, well, they all seem to be relatively young, possibly around 1 million years old maximum. And the ones detected so far are also very hot, around 1000 degrees Celsius or around 1800 Fahrenheit. Because these are new observations, not much else is known about these strange jumbos. But there is, however, another intriguing explanation related to previous assumptions and previous explanations in regards to this sector of Orion. Some of the former studies, specifically back from 2012, made suggestions that maybe somewhere inside of here there is some kind of a, an intermediate mass black hole, at least several hundred solar masses, which could be responsible for dispersing things in this cluster, providing them with so much velocity in the process. A lot of stars and a lot of material here is actually moving really, really fast. 
And if there is some kind of an intermediate mass black hole, in some sense, it might be the culprit behind these unusual planets. A compact massive object can occasionally strip planets away from stars if they pass relatively close to it. But because these planets would not be falling into the black hole and would be just passing by, if enough of them was stolen, some of them, maybe, could somehow combine into binary systems. And so there's at least one more potentially unconventional explanation to what's really happening inside this unusual nebula. I'm sure we'll get more details and more explanations in the next few months. Interestingly, what you're looking at right here, this patch of the night skies, this is only approximately 4 light years across, and it took approximately 9 days of observations and at least 700 separate shots by the James Webb. This mosaic was then patched into one image and put on this website for anyone to peruse. So definitely an incredible amount of information here, and it's definitely mind-blowing how we've come such a long way where you can actually now see these incredible scientific images basically using your own browser. But anyway, at least for now that's all I wanted to mention. Really cool stuff, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.